Forever 21 was at one time America's fastest growing fast fashion retailer. It used to be the hotspot for teens because of its trendy clothing for low prices. The $10 tank tops, club dresses, graphic tees, and ripped jeans they sold were practically a part of every young woman's closet for years. Forever 21 was a powerhouse in fast fashion, bringing in over $4 billion in sales annually at one point. The fashion chain seemed unstoppable. Well, that was in the not so distant past. They filed for bankruptcy back in September 2019. It's crazy to think that this California retailer that popularized fast fashion in the US went bankrupt so quickly. So what exactly happened to Forever 21? Do Wan Cheng, founder of Forever 21, was born in a village called Myeongdong in Seoul, South Korea in 1954. At an early age, he already had a strong work ethic instilled in him. When he was younger, he spent his time working in coffee shops. In fact, he even started his own coffee delivery service. He had always dreamed of moving to the US to pursue the American dream beginning when he was in the sixth grade. And in 1981, when he was only 22 years old, he made his dream come true by moving to LA with his wife, Jin Suk. When they arrived in LA, Do Wan Chang and Jin Suk had no money, no college degree, and spoke very little English. But they wasted no time when they got to LA. To make ends meet, Do Wan Chang immediately worked in a local coffee shop while he also worked eight hours a day at a gas station. To supplement his income even further, he even started a small office cleaning business that kept him busy until midnight. As for his wife, Jin Suk, she worked as a hairdresser. However, one day an idea popped into his head. While pumping gas, Do Wan noticed that the men who worked in the clothing industry drove the nicest cars. That inspired him to take a job at a clothing store where he was determined to learn the ropes. He realized that fashion could be his ticket to success in America. After three years of working, they managed to save $11,000. And in 1984, they opened a 900-square-foot apparel store called Fashion 21 in the Garment District in downtown LA. And much to their surprise, their store sold $700,000 worth of merchandise in its first year of business. It wasn't until 1987 that they renamed their business to Forever 21. They did the name change to emphasize the idea that their clothing was for anyone who wants to be young and trendy. As the business took off, Do Wan Chang and Jin Suk wanted to broaden the demographics of their customer base. As their store was only popular with the Korean American community. They called on their family members to help them open additional stores outside of LA. They started by opening locations in Houston and in Northern California. After those stores started to do well, they started opening a new Forever 21 store almost every six months. Forever 21 was growing in popularity at a time when fashion was exclusive and style conscious clothing wasn't exactly affordable for everyone. Designer or high fashion has historically only been available to the rich. Do Wan Chang and Jin Suk understood this and used it to their advantage. The reason Forever 21 became so successful was because they cultivated a huge following by selling trendy clothing for low prices. Jin Suk was eventually approving over 400 designs a day. This meant that the company could sell trends as soon as they were happening. Forever 21 made it possible for nearly anyone, from low-income families to students, to buy in on the trends. Customers could immediately and easily pick up a shirt for $10 or less. Not to mention, the rise of internet culture in the 2000s also helped fuel the demand for trendy and affordable clothing. Fast forward to 2001, and Forever 21 had opened 122 stores in the US. By this time, they've also opened their first store outside of North America. By 2005, they had 363 stores in the country and seven stores overseas. At the height of their international growth, Forever 21 had 251 stores internationally that spanned over 40 countries across five continents. Forever 21 also soon became one of the most common tenants of American malls with 480 locations nationwide. In 2015, Forever 21 sales peaked at $4.4 billion globally. As for Do Wan Chang and Jin Suk, they became one of America's wealthiest couples, with a combined net worth of an estimated $5.9 billion in March 2015. With their success, they had set a goal to double their company's sales and open 1,200 more stores by 2017. What exactly happened to their plan of further expansion? They had several problems. As the couple kept establishing more stores abroad, they were failing to realize that their clothing styles weren't exactly resonating in other markets. One big problem was simply that Forever 21 just wasn't all that popular outside of the US. They didn't do enough market research into the shopping habits of international consumers. They ultimately failed to produce fashion that their international customers wanted. Then another problem was with sizing. The way Forever 21 sizes their clothes just confused their international customers. It also appeared that Forever 21 didn't always understand local labor laws and just cultural 
customs in general. For example, Forever 21 opened in Germany, but they didn't realize that stores were typically closed on Sundays. They also didn't take into account that some customers in European countries shopped for winter merchandise earlier in the year than American consumers. In 2015, Forever 21 finally admitted that the majority of their international stores were unprofitable because of high labor costs and just the mere fact that its clothes didn't resonate with customers in Europe and Asia. Forever 21's international business has been hemorrhaging cash, losing more than $100 million annually since 2014. On top of that, Forever 21's frequent imitation of distinct designers and brands caused numerous lawsuits throughout the years. They went to court over copyright and trademark infringement from people such as Ariana Grande, as well as brands such as Gucci. Not everyone was swayed by ultra-cheap prices for copycat runway trends. Sustainability itself has become a trend, and fast fashion is all about picking up the newest trends and throwing away the old. Fast fashion has become more associated with cheap rather than trendy. E-commerce is one big area Forever 21 failed to take advantage of. Forever 21 admitted that its online sales were low compared to their competitors. Fashion retailers like Fashion Nova use celebrities and influencer-inspired marketing to grow at a rapid pace. And as e-commerce continued to boom, Forever 21 struggled to adapt to the changing consumer behaviors. Even though they launched their website back in 2005, their website only accounted for roughly 16% of its total sales according to their bankruptcy filing. This is mostly because they've been way too focused on their brick and mortar stores that they became late to the online game. Based on a survey in 2019, millennials prefer online shopping over going to a physical store. They make around 60% of their purchases online. As for Forever 21, even after all the years to prepare for online sales, they didn't properly prepare for their online presence. The confidence that came from their success back then led them to open new brick and mortar stores in 2016. They even expanded existing stores to take over multiple floors with men's, children's, and home goods sections. Forever 21's sales were estimated to have dropped by 20 to 25% in 2018. At this time, Do Wan Chang and Jin Suk have lost more than $4 billion from their net worth. And as of 2019, the company was already $500 million in debt, which ultimately led to the company filing for bankruptcy. Forever 21's bankruptcy didn't necessarily mean the end of fast fashion. It continued with the proliferation of online retailers, such as Everlane, ASOS, and Fashion Nova. Let's take Fashion Nova as a further example. They basically replicated the Forever 21 formula. They're not doing anything that different. They're selling ultra-trendy clothes at low prices with questionable production practices. They put their bet on consumers that valued easy accessibility. The only difference between Forever 21 and Fashion Nova is online presence. Fashion Nova invested heavily online, unlike many other traditional brick and mortar retail stores that now find themselves declining in sales. With the rise of social media, they tapped into the ever-growing funnel of social media influencers and select celebrities to promote their brand to widespread success. And just like Forever 21, Fashion Nova didn't start online. It was founded in the mid-2000s by CEO Richard Sagan. He started in the retail fashion business by working at his father's clothing boutique in Los Angeles. In 2006, Richard Sagan opened Fashion Nova's first location in Los Angeles, inside the Panorama Mall. At the time, he only sold inexpensive clothes meant for the club. He eventually noticed that some websites were selling the exact same things online, which pushed him to launch Fashion Nova online. He launched the e-commerce site in 2013, and Instagram was the main platform where he pushed his online marketing from the start. Sagian was one of the first people to recognize the power of social media platforms in building a successful online brand. Another reason for Fashion Nova's quick success was the fact that the brand catered to all body types and ethnicities. It was a hit to many people who felt ignored by retailers that offer limited plus size lines. Fashion Nova's social media exposure is actually more than that of H&M or Zara. They have deals with around 2,000 influencers, including Kylie Jenner, Cardi B, Khloe Kardashian, and Nicki Minaj. This makes it one of the most talked about brands online. And, according to Women's Wear Daily, a single post by Kylie Jenner returns millions of dollars in revenue for Fashion Nova. In fact, they've passed the internet presence levels of even luxury brands such as Gucci, Louis Vuitton, and Chanel. As Fashion Nova continues to grow, the company ventured into beauty products as well. They launched the highly anticipated line Maven Beauty in 2020. It's a pro-level makeup line sold exclusively at FashionNova.com. Their goal is to expand their makeup collection to battle with name brands similar to ones sold at Sephora. As for Forever 21, they've already started downsizing their stores. As one of the largest tenants of America's malls, a widespread shutdown of Forever 21 worsens what's already widely known as the retail apocalypse. 
Forever 21's bankruptcy doesn't necessarily mean the end for the brand. They could easily shut down their least profitable stores and focus on a new business strategy. Forever 21 has been refocusing its product assortment, streamlining its supply chain, and most importantly, growing their sales online. Fashion Nova, on the other hand, is continuously expanding their online presence to further strengthen their presence within the millennial and Gen Z population. Will physical retail stores soon be gone for good?